you know, when you do bad things, you can't just, you can't run away and hide forever. Like it's going to, it will catch up to you. Obviously none of us knew Audrey was going to be the way she turned out to be. Hi, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. In this video, we've got manipulation, deception, price markups justified by hypocrisy, and an ex-assistant telling it all. But before we get into it, I want to read a comment from my last video. This comment comes from Amy Phillips who says, They say old millennials can't learn new tricks, but I will learn Discord for you and you only. If you didn't know, I have a Discord server up now. It's totally free. This isn't like Patreon. You don't have to pay anything. You could just make an account. Go over there. It's like a giant chat room. We're all having a lot of fun sharing pictures of our pets, sharing stupid videos, sharing memes, TikToks. Go check it out. I'm going to link it below. And thank you so much, Amy, for learning new tricks just for me. I have upgraded you to a moderator. I have, so learn your responsibilities. Or you will get banned. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. In this video, we're going to be talking about Audrey Kitching and her company, Crystal Cactus. And before I jump into it, I have to answer the question, who is Audrey Kitching? Well, for those of you who don't know, and honestly, I thought this was a question that I knew the answer to, but it turns out I didn't quite know who she was. According to your 10th grade English teacher's kryptonite Wikipedia, Audrey Kitching is an American fashion blogger, model, and fashion designer known for her pink hair and Lisa Frank vibe. Kitching dated Panic at the Disco's lead vocalist Brandon Yuri in 2005, and she's the owner and founder of an online New Age store called Crystal Cactus. I remember Audrey Kitching being a scene queen on MySpace, and she would make YouTube videos, and I remember I would sit there and just watch them all for hours. Hi, I'm Audrey Kitching. You want to be a style icon? Follow me. I used to be a fan of Audrey Kitching. I waited to meet her at the 2008 Vans Warped Tour, where she had an employee tell me to go away. It's fine. We're thriving. Well, I am. It's more than I can say for her, apparently. So I randomly thought of her a couple months ago and I was like, what is she doing? So I just decided to look her up. So I found her Instagram and at first I was like, okay, come through Pink Pantone. Yes, Pastel Tumblr Dreams. Okay, Renaissance Nip Slip. And then I came across this article. Audrey Kitching is a MySpace queen turned energy healer. Critics say she's also a fraud. Allegations of abuse, design theft, and co-opting wellness culture have caught up with the woman set on being social media famous. I do want to say what I'm going to be talking about is mostly based on what was published in the article, which I'm going to link below. All opinions are my own, and I encourage you to do your own research to come to your own conclusions. And Audrey's former employee, Lauren, who I was lucky enough to sit down and talk to, is going to be telling her side of the story, but her side of the story is one that I think is very important to talk about. So with that being said, let's get into it. This piece was written by Naomi, who did an amazing job of putting these otherwise untold stories together, so I just want to give major props to her. Giving credit is something I strive more to do, and I think that's really important. Audrey, you should probably take notes. So the article starts by diving back to her past on MySpace, mentioning that Audrey gained the kind of fame that one gains not for any particular talent other than one for being noticed. I do just want to be devil's advocate. I'm not saying that Audrey Kitching didn't do anything to get to where she is today. She worked for BuzzNet, which now isn't a thing anymore. She would write for their blog. She was a model. So she was doing things and aesthetic is a talent, right? I'm just saying I'm not being facetious. I'm just saying I'm not being facetious. I'm not throwing feces. You get it. The article goes on to say that her role in her business isn't what she promises it to be, and there are at least three women who now cite their relationship with Kitching as abusive, manipulative, and controlling. I do just want to take this time to say that Audrey declined talking to the Daily Dot where this article was published. I even reached out to her, I wasn't expecting a response, and I didn't get a response. So keep in mind that we're not hearing Audrey's side of this situation, and she hasn't really said anything since, but I think silence is kind of a statement on its own. We'll get into that later. Audrey now runs an online shop called Crystal Cactus, which she describes as a soul project. A soul project. What in Caucasia? Anyway. The store offers candles, oils, crystals, and jewelry priced at significant markup, like this $28 amethyst point, this $36 soulmate butterfly brooch, and an $18 jar of glitter, sugar, and dried flowers marketed as fairy dust. That's literally what I call my dandruff. So if anybody wants to spend $18 on real fairy dust, I got you. I will scratch my head into a jar for you. Listen, this winter has been rough on my scalp. 
Not even Olaplex could help me. Um, not making light of the situation. Kitching is described as the designer for all of these goods. According to the site, each item is lovingly made with intention in small batches while embodying the energy to transform, inspire, and heal. This is Lauren. She used to be Audrey Kitching's employee working in the Crystal Castle studio, and according to her LinkedIn page, which I came across, she seemed to handle everything. Like, everything. She was also kind enough to take the time to talk with me. So she posted like a status on Twitter saying that she was looking for um, someone to finally come work in the Crystal Cactus studio. What was like your first red flag that things were kind of off? Um, so I was confused with the address at first um, because I always assumed that she was located in Philadelphia because that's what she always used to put on her products. Like on the tag, it would say like, hand, like handmade in Philadelphia or handmade in Philly. She used to lie and say handmade in New York City a lot too, but I knew that she was not anywhere near New York City. She was, um, I thought she was straight up Philly based, like in Philly. So I thought it was strange when I was told to show up on my first day to an address, like a home address in Collingswood, New Jersey. Then I was just like, okay, well, she's like right outside of Philly and she just doesn't, maybe she's in Philly a lot and she doesn't want anybody to know that she's not really based there. So I kind of like, I kind of like talked myself into being okay with it. And I talked myself out of thinking it was weird. According to Lauren, the Crystal Cactus Studio was in the basement of a suburban New Jersey home, which Audrey had inherited from her grandmother, I believe. And it was essentially just Lauren and this other employee named Labria who made up the Crystal Cactus team. Though sometimes one of Audrey's mother's friends would come over and help package orders and stuff like that. But that didn't last for long. Though it seems like Audrey Kitching didn't really do anything with the company, Lauren did claim that on occasion, Audrey would take a pair of pliers and attach a cheap crystal pendant to one of the many chains she'd purchased on AliExpress and say, there, see that? Make 40 of those. There is a Twitter account aptly named for Audrey Kitching. I like it. Which puts Crystal Cactus and Audrey herself on blast regarding many things, the products being sold being one of them. The bio reads, a movement dedicated to sharing evidence and opening a dialogue about Audrey Kitching's decade of scams. And as you can see, there is a lot of content here. Uh, clearly a lot of people have chimed in. This pinned tweet claims that Audrey was selling a necklace for $68 each and was identical to a necklace being sold on AliExpress for $1.91. If you don't know, AliExpress is an online retail service based in China, which connects businesses to buyers. The cost of these items is extremely cheap. Unlike Amazon, the majority of the merchants selling products on AliExpress are based in China and source all of their merchandise directly from Chinese manufacturers. This keeps costs down and means they can afford to offer free or very cheap shipping as well. I mean, it's all a little sus to me. Just a quick image reverse search of this butterfly brooch Audrey claims is handmade and sells for $36 and you'll find it right here on AliExpress for $1.89. And these $42 crystal cactus earrings? Weird. My fake ripoff Converse platforms from Japan. And if you were weary on the alleged AliExpress dupes, this might be the amethyst nail in the rose quartz coffin. God, I hate myself. Lauren shared with the Daily Dot this screenshot of an email allegedly from Audrey to Lauren regarding an order of products from AliExpress. As well as this email allegedly from Audrey to Lauren where Audrey states she bought these cheap brooches for 99 cents each on eBay. I'm very familiar with AliExpress. What percentage would you say of the items that were on there were from sellers like that? Oh, uh, pretty much everything that was not um, a, like a, a sage bundle um, or like anything that, that was in a glass jar that was like hand mixed. So like the bath salts, the sprays, the, um, the oils, the fairy dust or whatever, like anything that was like handmade for crystal cactus was obviously whatever she put together, which was like basic, she ordered glitter from the, from like an art supply, like vendor on Amazon that like a school teacher would use. And she put that in the fairy dust and she's like, it's fairy dust. And I'm like, you're literally just selling people stuff that you're buying for like two pennies on Amazon and you're marking it up like a crazy amount of money. Like you're just literally taking advantage of people and selling like trash products. Like 
what is this? So everything else, like any little, like, like any of the jewelry, all of the jewelry, any of the brooches, the necklaces, the earrings, the rings, anything like that all came from like Ally Express, uh, like kind of vendors or Ally Express themselves. Now I understand how retail works. You buy in bulk, mark up the price, make your profit that way. I get it. But it's when a company is claiming that everything is handmade with care and intention where, you know, I got some red flags going on. And I know that Labria had started to become discouraged working there because she, she would say the quality of this product, like this jewelry is cheap. Like this is cheap. Like people are, customers are like, emailing in and like writing to like our customer service, which was me and Labria taking care of that stuff. Like this is turning my neck green. Uh, the class broke like three hours after I wore it. So it was like always like there were always issues with the products always. So then how would you handle that from like a customer service aspect? Like what were you, or rather, let me rephrase that rather, what were you asked to do? So she would just tell that she would just say like, well, just send them uh, something free, but make sure it's something old that like we don't really sell anymore on the website. So it would be like, go through like the other junk and just like send them some more junk, basically, just to like make them feel like they got something out of it and it to make it look like we cared. Like that's like what I was literally, that's what I was instructed to do as per her. <laughs> I mean, the website said each item is lovingly made with intention in small batches while embodying the energy to transform, inspire, and heal. Let's just note that Audrey Kitching has had a controversial past of taking things from other people and displaying them as the fruits of her own labor. From stolen tweets and even full-on articles copy and pasted, using archive.org, I found this article written by Trend de la Creme back in 2010. And then Audrey publishes this article to BuzzNet, again, where she used to work as a blogger. Wow, it is uncanny. Like, like yeah. Jetsons. Yes. I love Jetsons. Barbie Jetsons. Yeah. We have secrets in our hair. <laughs> yeah. We have secrets. <laughs> you don't, know what, you don't know what it is. When people approach Audrey about her stolen tweets or question her business practice at all, she blocks them. And blocking seems to be her, like, her way of not dealing with things from what I'm observing. Is I'm totally. Did you like ever see her doing that stuff? Like when you were around her, was she just like blocking people who had even yeah. constructive criticism to say? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And she would say, oh, there's bad energy around them. I like, I need to like block their energy or she would, she would say like someone, who, someone that she was on the outs with was casting spells on her. Like when any little inconvenience would happen, it would be, ooh, someone, someone is like at home, like lighting candles and burning things with like negative thoughts about me. Someone's, you know, putting a spell on me. Like she never could take responsibility or accountability for herself, for her own life or her own choices. But I guess that won't be a problem anymore because after this Daily Dot article came out, Audrey Kitching allegedly deleted her Twitter. If it's out there, I can't find it. So the more I looked into the story, the deeper and darker the hole got. I'm editing it now and it's just too much for one video, so this is where I'm gonna leave part one. There obviously will be a part two and it doesn't get any better. If you don't believe me, here's a clip. And that's when she brought up that statement that she was a fairy queen in the past life and I was her slave, those were her words. Yeah. So, though you may feel inclined to do so, please do not send anyone in this video any sort of hate. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.